Now, we all know that running games off of hard drives is rather a slow process. So what happens when you decide not to run your games off of one of these, but rather instead of one of these? Now, to test it out, I picked up the Mega Poly Ultra video game called Star Citizen. You see, developers of that project say you should run it off of SSD for best performance, going as far as to even advertise with Intel Optane. Because, well, you see, Intel Optane does go faster than even NVMe today. However, when you have lots of these, what happens when you run the video game off of this instead of any of the other storage mediums? So let's test out those claims. And in fact, let's take a look at what the modern video games do with the storage today. Let's start with today's subject, nay, victim, Star Citizen. Why choose an unoptimized early access thing like that? Well, the developer CIG pushed the narrative back in the day that you needed an SSD, a very good one at that, to get the most performance out of this cobbled together mess of a project. And that, in turn, implied the narrative that you needed the top-of-the-line hardware for this next level of gaming experience. And I took that personally. See, as a wannabe developer, I dreaded the day when developers would just go out in the market and say that no, no, you, you, you don't need to code the game better, you don't need to be smart or know the game engine that you're working in. You just need to cobble together the mess that some hardware could run and just tell the audience that pff, you need the better hardware, you fucking plebs. It's totally not up to me to make the experience better, but it's up to you to spend more money on it. So you see, I particularly took an issue with that. Still, Star Citizen, like many other modern games, have ditched loading screens to use what is known as asset streaming. Basically, due to better storage bandwidth today, it's possible to load in bigger chunks of the game assets as you are playing the game, rather than having to wait for the spinny boys of the old days to load it all into the RAM before allowing you to play. Hell, even internet connections, well, at least in civilized countries like Latvia here, could be feasible to allow this over the internet connection. Sorry, Merck. It sucks to be you. But today I'll investigate the claims of how much does the storage actually impact the gameplay itself and not just the obvious loading times. So, how could you run a game off a RAM? Well, these days there are a few useful, some even free programs that can take a part of your RAM and turn it into an ordinary drive. Since in the past I've used SoftPerfect's RAM disk already, I will take that, but know that it's not the only one. Still, RAM is RAM. Once the power goes out, the files get deleted, so don't think that you could just simply use it for everyday stuff. Now then, for the testing purposes, I ran Star Citizen in two controlled places. Test number one was the loop of the train ride in the new garbage, which provides decent medium of assets getting loaded in and out of storage. And the second test was traveling from Microtech to the furthest point in the single system that Star Citizen has. This environment barely has anything in it to load and provides the most consistent frame rates that I know of in Star Citizen. Oh, and the version is 3.17.1 at the moment. As for the test bench PC that I'm using, well, back in the day, about four years ago, celebrating the channel's 50,000 subscriber milestone, I built myself a long-needed super rig for editing, gaming, and other things. Yes, I know, I went overboard and packed 128 gigs of RAM overkill by any means, and boy, am I gonna use it today. Along with that, of course, I usually run the games off my NVMe drive, so that's where the comparison result will come from. Oh, and uh, stay tuned, because I'll be torturing Star Citizen with this. And in fact, this too, so yeah! Now, before we get into the RAM disk, we need to establish the baseline, the horse ripper with the normal NVMe storage. Now, overall, performance is about as much as you would expect, and those wondering that why the RTX 2080 Ti is underperforming, well, remember that games do not run just on GPUs alone, right? 
You see, the Threadripper is, well, by all accounts, a unique CPU, but not when it comes to single-core performance. And games programs with DirectX 11 and older, much like Star Citizen itself, don't exactly benefit from multi-threaded performance as much as it does from a single-core performance. Now, further around this, to give you at least some basic understanding of how RAM differs from even PCIe drives, well, here are some numbers. Now, clearly, speed-wise, RAM still exceeds a lot of what is possible with SSDs today, so I, like you at home, expected at least some kind of improvement. Now, when it came time to load up Star Citizen files onto the RAM disk, uh, the, the fucking thing takes up 80 gigs of space. <laughs> Luckily, I still had enough leftover RAM after putting all those files onto it to also manage to run it without needing to use the page file, which is usually about 22 gigs at maximum, I've noticed. So I had some headroom of about 10 gigs or so. Otherwise, using page file would just completely invalidate the results. However, when the time came for RAM disk, well, we all expected some sort of improvement. Right? Well, no. Instead, we see a massive reduction in averages and all other numbers. I genuinely ran this test four more times to make sure, swapping between them, that something wasn't wrong, but nope, all the numbers always came back the same. If I wasn't using logging software and just relied on my eyes and brain to look at the frame counter, well, that would be really, really, really stupid and no one should ever do that. But honestly, I could not tell the difference. So basically, is Star Citizen running on far superior memory slower? So what the fuck is going on? Well, if the numbers are correct, and as far as I can tell they are, my first thought was, well, maybe RAM has some sort of a latency difference, uh, it's much higher or something. But nope, that's not it either, it's weird. I honestly am stumped and really don't know how to explain that. So maybe you can help out. Later on I did a few more tests on few different games, just to check whether or not I was completely wrong about RAM disk or not. However... Now, though, before we draw any conclusions, it's time for some, uh, fun, shall we say. Right! That, my friends, is the VR PC, and I'll be torturing Star Citizen, who's gonna be begging for data, and the hard drive, who's gonna be begging for death. After installing the same graphics card and 32 gigs of the very same RAM into my VR rig, I started testing. Now my VR rig that I call this PC has third generation Ryzen, but only with 6 cores and no hyper threading. However, compared to my Threadripper per core, it's actually better. So how will the score change? Well, immediately the first thing I felt after launching Star Citizen on the hard drive was obviously the glacial loading times. And that's the hard drive. Yep, loading screens. It's been that way for a couple of minutes for sure. It was really, really bad. However, after it finally loaded up and I got out of the bed, oh gods, it still continued to be really problematic. Massive amounts of stuttering as if the graphics card was running out of memory, but eventually, after loading the last bits of data into the RAM from the hard drive, it settled down, or at least as much as it could. So I started running tests. In fact, you can see here, in the first test I did without waiting for the hard drive to finish working, had horrible performance. However, if you take a look at the second test I did right after the first train loop, now you can see some more consistent data. Now, looking at the stats, the hard drive resembles the RAM disk. What the fu- No, not quite that, because with the hard drive it actually did stutter quite a bit more. However, this is Star Citizen we're talking about, both of them stuttered. The unoptimized piece of sh- In this scenario, the hard drive was notably more stuttertastic, which threw down the frame rate. In fact, as we go on to the test number two, the space quantum drive nonsense, here you can see the exact difference that asset streaming makes. In space, the little 6-core Ryzen, without the need to load in nearly anything, now managed to fully stretch the GPU's legs and it handily beat the NVMe and RAM disk in performance when Threadripper was at health. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what bottlenecks look like. 
Either it's CPU, GPU or memory, it's always something that is holding back the overall experience of a video game. Now, for my own sanity, I picked up two other games for two separate tests, just to make sure that I'm not going completely insane. Half-Life 2, which is the old-school loading screen type of a game, and No Man's Sky, which has the asset streaming. Well, not exactly like Star Citizens, but at least a similar principle. For Half-Life 2, I can say there is no real difference in performance that I could tell, which again is expected from an old-style game, where you load everything onto GPU and RAM before letting you play in the first place. But for No Man's Sky, oh, here we actually notice a slight improvement for RAM disk, which lends credence to what I was thinking about. A few extra frames here and there, but consistently better. So the question really comes back to Star Citizen. What the fuck? Now, in conclusion, I chose to run Star Citizen off of a RAM disk, just to see how this far superior memory would get in performance-wise for this unoptimized, netcode bogged down nonsense of a project. However, I did not expect the result I got. But regardless, what Star Citizen is or is not, today's lesson really has turned into something a bit different. Basically, it's a lesson in how to spend your money better. Now, many in the comments already probably have commented that Oh, my 2080 Ti or RTX graphics card is not performing this poorly like this guy! Well, you see, graphics card is not the only one that affects the performance of any video game today, especially. And you can feel that even if you don't go completely insane like what I did and run a fucking Star Citizen off of a fucking hard drive. And overall, today's lesson is all about bottlenecks. Getting the best graphics card while neglecting your CPU and even storage obviously is not the smartest thing to do, Obtain or not. Hell, even running it off of a fucking RAM disk ain't gonna solve the problems that your cobbled together mess of a project you call a game is. Still, it's rather interesting to see how games today are moving away from more traditional loading screens and into more asset streaming, if you will. The technology is changing overall. And that comes with its own drawbacks as well, as you can see with uh, hard drives not really cutting it anymore particularly. Now, long since been the mantra of PC Master Race to say that SSDs at the very least will bring in new life into old hardware. However, these days, well, looking at the stats here, it might actually be, sometimes, more important than the graphics card you get. So, there you go. Whether or not you're running your games off a RAM disk or still using a hard drive, regardless of what you choose to pick up, well, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a gander into the tech world with me. I'm sure not the smartest out there, because hell, I still don't understand what the fuck is going on with Star Citizen there, so let me know what the hell. But even without that, if you enjoy this content that I make out there, or maybe you're interested about the Horse Ripper, well, do check out the video about it. I made it about four years ago for the 50,000 subscriber milestone. So, for now, all I can say is thanks for watching, and as always, if you want to support the content I make, check out the Patreon, because it really is helpful there. And I'll see you next time, I suppose. Poly Super Game Project called Star Citizen. The div <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> TF2, no, I don't want to play TF2, just god damn it! <laughs> hey fam, you got any hats you want to share in that game? <laughs> How about that Warframe now, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay, right, anyways.